الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. As we talked yesterday about some of the signs that indicate that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves you. Another sign is that when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves you, He punishes you immediately instead of waiting to punish you in the hereafter, which the punishment in the hereafter would be greater. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, إِذَا أَحَبُّ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا عَجَّلَ لَهُ أُقُوبَ فِي الدُّنْيَا That when Allah loves a servant, he hastens his punishment in this life. And this is something that we use modern terminology. Uh, you hear people say all the time, my karma is immediate. My karma is immediate. Meaning, when I do something wrong, it always comes back to me almost immediately. And some for us, for us as Muslims, that should be a good sign. That should be a sign. Not that a sign that I just can't get away with anything, but a sign that maybe perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for me. The Prophet sallallahu was mentioned in the authentic narration of the authority of Abdullah ibn Mughaffin, who said that a man, he met a prostitute. لَقِيَ رَجُلٌ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِمْرَأَةً كَانَتْ بَغِيَّ فِي الْجَاهِلِيَة فبسط يده إليها فقالت معاذ الله أقال سبحان الله قالت سبحان الله فقد أذهب الله بالجاهلية وجاءنا بالإسلام فتركها فلما تولت وذهبت المرأة كان الرجل ينظر إليها وهي تمشي فأصاب وجهه حائطا فذهب إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ليخبره بما حصل والدم يسيل على وجهي فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنت عبد أراد الله بك خيرا إذا أراد الله بعبد خير عجل له أقوب في الدنيا وإذا لم يرد الله لعبد خير أمسك عليه العذاب وعقوبة حتى يوافيه يوم القيامة وهو كجبل عظيم سبحان الله this particular companion, he saw a woman who used to be a prostitute in Jahiliya prior to Islam. And when he saw the woman, he thought that perhaps the woman was still in that element. So he stuck his hand out to her and the woman said to him, SubhanAllah, Allah has removed us from Jahiliya and brought us to Islam. Meaning, I don't do that anymore. Don't, you know, treat me like that anymore. I don't get down like that anymore. So as the woman began to walk away, the companion was looking at her as she was walking away. And as he was walking backwards, he hit his head on something. So he went and told the Prophet ﷺ, and as he went to the Prophet ﷺ to tell him, blood was literally coming down the side of his face from the wound. And the Prophet ﷺ said to him, you are a servant who Allah wanted good for. If Allah wants good for his servant, he hastens his punishment in this life. And if Allah doesn't want good for a servant, then he withholds the punishment until he gets it, Yom Al-Qiyamah, and it will be magnified. One sin magnified like a mountain, a huge mountain in Medina. Showing you that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for you, he punishes you immediately. Some of us think that, well, you know, I always, you know, my karma comes back to me immediately. I can never seem to get away with anything. And that might be a good sign. That might be a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Another sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you is that He begins to influence your faculties and you begin to use your faculties in the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is a hadith al Qudsi, that مَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ that my servant doesn't come close to me with anything that is more beloved to me than the things that I have already made obligatory on him. And this is important for us to understand because a lot of times we always looking for this one good deed for us to do that we believe is going to bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you'll find that while looking for this big deed that we believe is going to bring us to Allah, uh, we are negligent in some of the things that are obligatory. We major in the minor and minor in the major, right? 
So he said that my servant doesn't come close to me with anything that is more dear to me than the things that I have made beloved to him, I made obligatory on him. He said, And my servant continues to come closer and closer to me with the supererogatory, with the voluntary, with the extra deeds until I love him. Okay, so what happens when Allah loves you? He said, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِي When I love him, I become the ears with which he hears. وَبَصْرَهُ الَّذِي يُبْسِرُ بِي And his eyes with which he sees. وَيَدَّهُ الَّذِي يَبْتِشُ بِهَا And the hands with which he grabs. وَرِجْلَهُ الَّذِي يَمْشِي عَلَيْهَا And the feet with which he walks. وَإِذَا سَأَلَنِي لَأُعْتِيَنَّ And if he was to ask me for anything, I would give it to him. وَإِذَا سَأَلَنِي لَأُعْتِيَنَّ And if he was to seek refuge with me from anything, I would give him refuge. This is the, the end result of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving you. That you begin to use your faculties in the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You no longer use your eyes for your own pleasure to see what is you know, desirable to your soul. You no longer use your ears to hear the things that, you know, pleases your soul. You no longer use your hands for things that are pleasing to your soul and your desires. Those faculties are now being used only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And give you one example. Urwa ibn Zubayr, one of the children of uh, Abdullah, uh, one of the children of Zubayr ibn Awam, he had to get his leg amputated because he was bit by or stung by uh, a snake and the venom began to spread on his leg, throughout his leg. So he had to have his leg amputated. So one of the people who were there, some of the non-Muslim doctors or physicians that were looking at his leg said, should we pour you some khamar? Should we pour you some alcohol? To, to numb you to the pain. And he said, Khamar is haram fi dini. Wala asta'inu ala ma haram Allah ala ma arju fihi al afiyah. He said that I will not use, he said, Khamar is haram in my religion. He said, and I will not use something that Allah made haram to gain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala success in, in, in an affair that I desire his success. I'm not going to use something haram. And that's a general principle that we can use in our lives. I'm not going to use something that Allah made haram to gain success in an affair that I require, that I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala success in. Right? So they asked him, well, what are you going to do when we remove in your leg? He said, I'll remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll remember Allah. Azkurullah. And so they began to, you know, remove his leg, sawing his leg off. And he fell unconscious. And when he regained consciousness, he saw his leg in the hands of one of the doctors. And he said to the man, Itti be rigidly, bring me my leg. And he grabbed his leg and he kissed it. And he said, Wallahi, he said, Wallahi, Wallahi, la ilaha ghayru. Ana uqsim bil ladhi ja'ala, ana uqsim, uqsim bil ladhi ja'ala ki. He said, I swear by Allah, the one who placed you underneath me, the one who placed my body on top of you for you to carry me, that I have never taken one footstep. I have never taken one footstep with you towards anything that was haram. He's talking to his leg. He said, I swear by the one who placed you at my service. Who gave you to me to carry my body on. That I have never taken one footstep with you towards anything that is haram. And I mean this is important for us because we know that Yom al -Qiyama, our body parts will talk to us. Yom al -Qiyama, our body parts will testify against us as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. Hatta idha shahida alayhim sam'uhum wa absaru. That when their eyes and their hearing testify against them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the conversation between the human being and his body parts. That Allah, they will ask the body parts, why did you testify against us? And the body parts will respond back that Allah is the one who gave us the ability to speak, the one who can give anything the ability to speak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is our azim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do, can do whatever he wills. So he's talking to his body part, he's talking to his leg. He said, I swear by Allah, the one who gave you to me to carry me, carry my body on, that I have never taken one footstep with you towards anything that is haram. I mean, when you think about, in retrospect, today, 
How many of us can look at our body parts and say that I have never used you in the commission of anything that is harm? How many of us can look at our hands and our eyes and all of these body parts that are going to testify against us, Yom of the Emma, and say that I have never used you? Right? Because these body parts are going to testify for you or against you. The Quran is going to testify for you or against you. The earth is going to testify for you or against you. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, that the, you know, that the man will turn to the earth and say, what is wrong with it? And then the earth will speak because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah gave it the ability to speak. Which is why some of the Sahaba like Abdullah ibn Umar and Aisha and Uthman as it was reported on them that when they would make the obligatory prayer, they would make their sunnah prayer in another place. Because the more places your head prostrates on the earth, for each place your head prostrates, that part of the earth will testify for you, Yom al La ilaha illallah. So, you know, to, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, He begins to influence your faculties and using your faculties only in the manner that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu ta'ala a'alam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.